gosh, yeah. and, and the backstory behind care oncology is quite interesting. Would you mind sharing a little bit? How did how did this come to be in this, and what is the metabolic approach to cancer? Perhaps we'll yeah, so in there. real quickly on care oncology, it started like most things in life uh, because of a brave woman. Uh, Ginny was married to Robin Bannister. Robin was a PhD pharmacist and drug developer with a you know a creative background and a good big lab in London. His wife had uh, unfortunately gotten to the point where she had exhausted all the options for her stage four breast cancer and was recommended to go to hospice. At that point, he said, you know, let's, let's, you know, rethink this. And, you know, I call that point always save your ass university where you really get creative and, and <laughs> yeah. dive in. I love that. And we bought, and I know you've been through a few of those yeah, that are incredibly few exciting. Universities. <laughs> and yeah. And so he put his team to work and, and, you know, in summary, ultimately chose these four drugs, four drugs that have been initially utilized for common non-cancer maladies, uh, but had a lot of ongoing data to say, gee, there is some impact on cancer. And he, he chose four because, you know, all drugs have, you know, some side effects and, you know, have a sweet spot in their dosing. And he thought four was about the right number that would work with layering on with cancer patients and his wife. And he chose these four drugs primarily on their wealth of human data, not just, you know, animal data or Petri dish data. Number two, on their safety. He, wanted, he knew that people would be also participating in, in other treatments and he wanted it to be sort of invisible to their standard of care. Thirdly, he wanted drugs that had multiple non-overlapping mechanisms of action. So they'd wow. work on different pathways and be therefore mutually synergistic. And then finally, he wanted drugs that would also have a benefit to other chronic conditions, unlike a lot of our current treatments where you sort of have to burn a bridge in the future to yeah. get some benefit today. And um, so Ginny got on them and lived four and a half years. And of course, wow. that was a, a reasonably good outcome, not a, not a home run, not what you know Robin and close loved ones would want, but uh, it it's did a, trigger yeah, yeah, enough precious. interest to to kind of journey fur, further. And then they tested it in 100 glioblastoma patients in a patient accrual trial. It's called a patient registry trial there in London. And that showed a, a, a two to three X improvement over wow. standard of care, wow. SEER data outcome. And so that was enough to say there is some serious signal here that we need to follow up on. And then they opened it up to all patients. And I think they've treated over five to six, 7,000 in England. We've treated uh, uh, just under that here in the U.S. We have six oncologists, always working virtually, wow. and uh, a wonderful nurse team that also are all integrative and oncology trained. That so, is so, uh, so valuable. Like, and, and, th and this is, you know, this is a complete new approach. And when you go to your standard oncologist in your local hospital, at least, you know, in New Zealand, um, you, you say metabolic approach and there's just silence. There's no, there's no knowledge of it whatsoever, yeah. usually. Um, Bingo. I have found yeah. a couple that have, oh, I've heard about, you know, something about it, but that, that's, just, that's not within the standard of care and, and, and therefore they're not, they're not up on the, on the, da on the data, really. Um, and, and I came across the metabolic approach. I first found Jane McClellan was the first mm -hmm. um, with her How to Starve Cancer book and uh, dived in there and um, the Radical Remission book and, uh, um, mm -hmm. oh, you know, the uh, number of books. and and I came across those those uh, drugs. So, in your in your core, the four drugs that um, the pharmacist found: so, mabendazole, doxycycline, metformin, and um, uh, atabastatin are the four yep. that he sort of settled on. So, I had my mum on those from the get go. We had we, we were we were already on metformin because mm -hmm. it's a fantastic longevity drug anyway. Sure. Um, and um, so we added in the the other three. Have you since that time also added in other supplements and uh, other drugs in the combination as the research has gone on and you've worked with you know further? Yes. Uh, let, let me answer that. You, first of all, you hit on, you know, a hot topic. Uh, you know, our, our British side has gone through a lot of compliance checks and, 
and they've always kept these four drugs in, in, in reasonable dose range and, and uh, have passed them on flying colors. And you know, as a company, we knew that we didn't want to just open up to everything and we wanted to stay alive in our mm. complicated caregiving world. Yeah, uh, We yeah. cover all the U.S. here in the United States and part of Canada. And so we've just kept it to those four drugs. However, and, to, and within certain dose ranges, because we know, you know we've got a lot of archival experience with those and have a center of excellence over in England with a lot of, a lot of data and a lot of uh, you know, you know, papers on different things. So we, you know, like yesterday I saw 13 patients and wow. commonly different topics come up like, uh, you know, what would I add to this? Um, yesterday we, you know, we had a, a, one of our long-term patients who is a lovely man and he's five years out from glioblastoma. Wow. We only saw him three years. He'd recurred twice and we saw him about three years ago wow. and he's got some marginal changes and we don't know if it's like a block shunt or a partially block shunt or true progression. And so, you know, we, we did a, a, you know, a think tank event by email and then we had a face to face. And so I brought up two, two additional strategies that may be out there that he could possibly possibly pursue on his own. In addition to, you know, ongoing metabolic impact. And so we brought those up. One is uh, fluoxetine yep. or Prozac. And yep. another one was oxaloacetate, which uh, used yep. to be only available from like- uh, I've got it. Know, I've got both of those. But. Yeah, <laughs> industrial sources. But now um, there's a, an outfit that is providing access to oxaloacetate, which you know has some use in a lot of brain tumors. So, so we, mm. I think m most of our team is very conversant in these. Yep. And I've always debated in our physician-physician meetings whether we need to deploy or consider a second list, you know, a salvage regimen. But you know, oh, to your so. original, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to your original <laughs> question, and, and we're, I, I have to credit um, one of our one of our founders, the fellow who really was responsible for bringing it over, Travis Christofferson, author, mm -hmm. science writer. He yeah. wrote the book, Tripping Over the Truth. That's one so, with it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So in it, he, you know, he really targets the sort of the, the history of the evolution of cancer care mm. and how, you know, Otto Warburg had two Nobel Prizes for his, you know, early work looking at cancer is having mitochondrial flaws that would only therefore burn glucose in the presence of oxygen. Mm. And then uh, with further refinement of our tools, there was, you know, better understanding of genetic mutations. And so around 1960, there was sort of a diversion from, you know, open-mindedness to metabolic strategies to mm. more of a, the somatic mutation theory of cancer that all cancers are related to a, oh, genetic, a, yeah. a yeah, a misproduction of a you know miscopy of DNA and then forms a clone. And then the metabolic theory got left by its side. And as a caregiver, you know, I was always trying to discern why do some groups thrive and survive, and some groups, you know, possibly don't survive or crash and burn, so to speak. And you know, I said we never really you know, gave credence to some of the other things they're doing in their life, like sleep, like their emotional status, like nutrition, like their exercise and activity programs, like, you know, a myriad of other things we could talk about. Um, and so when I stumbled upon care oncology, met Travis, I knew I was in good alignment. Wow. Travis helped bring to light through the book, Tripping Over the Truth, the metabolic theory of cancer, namely that you know, there, there may be more importantly, sort of a loss of regulation because of failure of our energy metabolism, our mitochondrial function that oversees and governs the sanctity of our protein production through our RNA and DNA copy and production for our DNA transcriptome. So that um, I think has really started an avalanche of inquiry on this topic. Um, there is debate. Uh, Dr. Cantley says, well, maybe it's not purely mitochondrial dysfunction 
and, and maybe the, the cells burn glucose to bring cell mass or more building blocks to, to satisfy the rapid division of cancer cells. And that point is currently being debated, but clearly mm -hmm. the somatic mutation theory is not the sole theory. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, if you bi biopsy a cancer, um, a metastatic spite site especially, you will have 200 plus you know, mutational flaws. Yep. Yep. And, and many of those are downstream mutations that occur because of loss of regulation. And maybe only a few are sort of key driver mutations right. that are leading to this, this flawed growth. Um, it's interesting, the, the Dr. Weinberg, who championed the, the hallmarks of cancer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and later in 2012, I think it was, or 13, he added three more, two of which are purely metabolic in their, in their mindset. It's right. So yep. it's a slow movement. Right. And uh, every day I'm honored and amazed at seeing some of the sort of the resiliency uh, and uh, you know, the outcomes that reflect that resiliency and yep. people who are embarking on sort of the, the other, you know, the yeah. metabolic protocol and other yeah. things that impact that.